Poll Kit, otherwise known as Policy Kit, is a way for providing an unprivileged process access to a privileged process. Think of it like providing partial root access. This is commonly used in the context of GUIs, say for example with a file manager. Rather than opening up the entire file manager as root, what you can do is start querying these root folders through Polkit. Now if you're using an established desktop environment like GNOME, KDE, and things like that, you've probably never seen this issue before. But if you're using a window manager like I am, or you built an environment yourself, this may have been something you've seen. So this application right here is CPUX. What it does doesn't really matter. But if we click on the Start Daemon button, it is going to require access to Polkit. If I click this, this happens. PK exec authorization could not be obtained, not authorized. This is due to the fact that most window managers don't ship a GUI authentication agent. Basically, a UI so you can actually enter your password. And because there's no UI there, it instantly fails the authorization. Except you do have one, not a GUI option, but a TUI option. So when you install Polkit, it includes a TTY agent as well that is aptly called PK TTY agent. So if we go and run CPUX in the daemon mode, it's going to try to ask me for my password. Entering that password, we're going to see this. Error executing command as another user, not authorized. So I guess I entered the password wrong. Well, let's try it again. And the exact same thing happened. Authentication failed. Error executing command as another user, not authorized. I'm not typing my password in wrong. This just doesn't work. And it's not just this one program being weird. Let's try pkexec. This is the way you actually run Polkit with any application. And let's do it with ls. Let's try and enter the password. And the same thing happens. It doesn't matter if you're directly on the TTY, Wayland, Xorg, or anything else out there. It is always going to happen. On Wayland, it is a much bigger deal because you can't actually run a GUI as root in most cases. So you kind of need this method to have root access inside of a GUI. Luckily though, the solution is incredibly simple. Pretty much all you need to do is make sure you have another authentication agent. So there is a list of these over on the Arch Linux wiki. There are likely others out there that do exist, but these are the main ones that I'm gonna talk about today. So on my system, I am using Polkit GNOME. It really doesn't matter which one you grab. The only thing that is different is they're going to be designed around different desktops and obviously going to be built in, you know, different GUI frameworks. So if you grab, say, the KDE agent, it's going to be in Qt. If you grab the GNOME one, it's going to be in GTK and all of the others are going to look like their specific desktops they come from. If you don't want to use any of those, you want to use something that's pretty minimal and just does the job and nothing else, you can go and grab this one here, Polkit Dumb Agent. This is pretty much as simple as it can possibly get. And to be honest, I should probably just go and install this one. However, this one is built in QT, so at the end of the day, you're never going to win. Just grab the one that you think looks the nicest and go from there. So for Polkit GNOME, it provides the Polkit GNOME Authentication Agent 1 stored at this location right here, not your normal binary location, so it's likely not going to be in your path variable. But pretty much all we need to do is just go and run the application. And then once we run it, now it's going to work. Let's open up CPUX again. If we start the daemon, now we have this prompt here. If I go and enter my password, it's now working. It's showing the extra information that should be shown when we're running the daemon. And if we try it from the terminal as well, the exact same thing is going to happen. It's going to open up this prompt here, entering the password, is going to make the application work like it should. So when you run any of these solutions, they are automatically going to take precedence over the TTY solution. The TTY option is only there as a fallback. There's no extra configuration you need to do to make sure it's not being used. But do keep in mind that you should never run multiple of these GUI options at the same time, like say the Mate solution and the GNOME solution. It's not going to be damaging or anything like that, 
but it may not act in a consistent fashion. Just run the one you want to run. If you don't like that one, stop running it and then open up a different one. And I can't speak for every distro, but at least on Arch Linux, these packages aren't conflicting with each other. So if you want to install multiple at the same time and then switch between them to try it out, that is very easy to do. Now with most of the authentication agents, when you run them, they are not going to be automatically restarted when you reboot your system. So you have a couple of options for what you might want to do. One, if you don't need the authentication agent all of the time, you can just go and start it when you actually need it. Generally, this is what I've been doing because there's like one or two applications on my system where I actually use it, so it's not really a big deal for me. The second solution is use any various form of auto starting, whether it's in a system D job, whether it's in your window manager config, it doesn't really matter how you auto start it, but that's probably a more convenient way to do it if you don't really care about that extra bit of computation being used to just keep it open all the time. For me, if I was going to keep it open all the time, I'd probably just launch it from my Exynet RC, but that's just the way that I generally like to do it. Now, it makes sense why we couldn't use a GUI agent. We didn't have any installed. But when I opened up the application from the terminal and we saw the TTY agent, why wasn't that working? Well... In much older versions of Polkit, this was actually totally doable, but there's been a bit of a problem for a little bit of time. When I say a little bit of time, what I mean is six years. The weird thing about it is in some contexts, Polkit does work exactly like it should. For example, you're probably on something like systemctl and you've seen this prompt. This is the Polkit PKTTY agent, and you've entered your password, and it worked like it should be working. So there seems to be some sort of communication error between PKExec and the PKTTY agent. If there was some sort of fundamental issue inside of Polkit, the GUI solution probably wouldn't deal with it either. So this issue has been inside of the Polkit project since 0.113. Right now, I'm running 0.121, and it's not really been that big of an issue for most of the Linux desktop, because most users are using a DE, and when you're using a DE, you're using a GUI Polkit agent. Now, there have been multiple merge requests open about this issue. For example, this one here, and this older one right here. This one was made about three or so months ago, and is ready to be merged, or at least it seems like it's ready to be merged. It's unclear if that is ever actually going to be merged. There's also this one from two years ago, which was trying to address the exact same issue. Now, some distros may not experience this issue because these patches are available. Some of them may be shipping this patch to make sure the issue doesn't occur, but on distros like Arch Linux, that's not the case. It's using the version directly from the Polkit project, which has the bug. So let me know, have you ever experienced this problem yourself, or are you using a Destro environment where it's just automatically dealt with because of the GUI TTY agent? Or are you using a distro where the problem doesn't exist because the distro actually patched it? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stone and Verapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Ops and Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.